بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم ما بعد هداية a great bounty نعمة from الله جل جلاله part of هداية is realizing how much flaws we have and how flawless Allah is حاجي باي باديا رحمة الله لا يسي to recognize your flaws is called هدايت recognizing how much flaws we have that is a sign of hidayat how imperfect I am and how perfect Allah is Yahya bin Mu'az al-Razi rahimullah you say man arafa nafsahu faqad arafa rabbah whoever recognizes himself can recognize Allah explain this Ibn Qayyim rahimullah you say there are three meanings Number one is, if you can realize your weakness, you will realize the power and the strength of Allah. So ponder on your deficiencies, you will realize the perfection of Allah Jalla Jalaluhu. Allah is Qawi, He is powerful, I am very weak. We are dependent, Allah is Ghani, Allah is independent. Allah is Alim, He is all knowing, I am ignorant, I am Jahil. Allah is Malik, He is King, we are slaves. Allah is Mu'min, Allah gives protection, we are in need of protection. Allah is Muhammad, He is the Guardian, I am lost. Allah is Aziz, He is mighty, I am insignificant. Allah is Khalik, He is a creator, I am Makhluk created. Allah is Ghaffar, He is forgiving, I am a vengeful. Allah is Wahab, He is generous, I am stingy. Allah is Basir, all seen. I am blind. Allah is Adl, is filled with justice. And I am filled with injustice. Allah is Khabir, aware of everything. And I am unaware. Allah is Halim, He is tolerant. I am intolerant. Allah is Shakur, He is grateful. I am ungrateful. Allah is Hay, He is everlasting. And our existence will terminate. Allah is wajid, self-sufficient, we are completely dependent. Allah is ghani, he is independent, I am always in need. Allah is hadi, he is the giver of hidayat, and I am always in need of hidayat, I am astray. Secondly, is to explain that if you look at yourself, if you realize all the bounties of Allah from the strength of the human body, to the speech, to life, to all the ni'am and favors of Allah, how Allah has created us with perfection, you will realize that if I am so perfect and Allah is so perfect in His creation, then how much more perfect will Allah be? So if you look at the favors of Allah, you will find Allah in that. And number three, that how you do not know yourself and you are ignorant of what Allah has given you, then how much more ignorant will you be about Allah and the power of Allah? If you are ignorant with regards to your potential, you are ignorant with recognizing the bounties of Allah, if you are so ignorant, how much more will you be ignorant about the greatness of Allah? So we need to be looking at ourselves all the time to find us Allah, continuing with the types of Hidayah. We concluded five, number six, Al-Hidayah ila al-Jannah wa nar That to be guided to Jannah or Jahannam. So even if a person has Iman, but there are flaws and deficiencies, you will have to go to Jahannam first before entrance into Jannah. And this is the fruits of the last quality where a person is given tawfiq فَمَنْ زُهْزِيَ عَنِ النَّارُ وَأُدْخِلَ الْجَنَّةِ A direct pass, direct entry into Jannah. This is a bounty, this is a favor from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is the ultimate criteria for success why a person doesn't suffer any punishment 
إن الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات يهديهم ربهم بإيمانهم الله سبحانه وتعالى will guide the people of Iman to a tajri min tahtihim ul anhar that Allah will guide them to this channa alhamdulillahi alladhi hadana lihada wa ma kunna li nahtadiya law la an hadana Allah if it wasn't the favor of Allah then we would have not reached these bounties and ni'am of jannah to such an extent that Nabi has said, Riwayat of Bukhari, فَوَالَّذِي نَفْسُ مُحَمَّدٍ بِيَدِهِ That I take an oath on whose hands Muhammad Sallallahu soul is لَأَحَدُهُمْ أَهْدَى بِمَنْزِلِهِ فِي الْجَنَّةِ مِنْهُ بِمَنْزِلِهِ كَانَ فِي الدُّنْيَا Every one of them will know his dwelling in Jannah, paradise better than he knew his own dwelling in this world. So even though dwelling in Jannah, a person will recognize his abode أكثر مما تعرف بيتك في الدنيا better than you know your house in this dunya. So a person who is holding steadfast unto Haq and Hidayah then a person is fortunate and he will be guided to such an extent he will be protected from Jahannam and guided to the ultimate Jannah. Likewise, Jannah is 100 stages, so guided to stage 1, stage 2, stage 50. The very fortunate and who got tawfiq from Allah, they will get the ultimate prize, Jannatul Firdaus the penthouse of Jannah, the ultimate achievement in Akhirah. So I believe all the time, even in our insincerity sometimes, Allah accepts a person. That's when we make in dua, we are told, if you cannot cry, فَتَبَاكِ Show Allah, display, display your sincerity, make show like you are crying. The magicians in the time of Musa والسلام, imitated his dress mockingly. But even that mocking appearance, ulama, some ulama have said that Allah liked that, that Allah gave them hidayah to such an extent. Qalu amanna bi Rabbi Haruna wa Musa. We have brought Iman in the Rabb of Harun and Musa والسلام, So even in their show Allah liked it that Allah gave them Hidayat. So Ulama say even in our insincerity sometimes Allah is so merciful that He accepts us. Imagine if we were genuine. Malana Ilyas used to say we are not doing the effort of tabligh. Ambiya did the effort of tabligh, how it should have been done. Saba did it. We cannot even say we are doing this noble work. He used to say we are just doing the naql. We are just trying to imitate them. We are hopeful that in this naql, this imitating, Allah will resurrect us with the genuine. So we are fake, we are hopeful that us trying to imitate the genuine people, Anbiya and Sahaba, Allah will resurrect us with them as well. So Allah is so great, we need to put ourselves forward. There was a thief who was planning a robbery for a while, a long time, at the royal palace. The date came where he needed to execute his plan. So that evening he infiltrated the palace and while he was there, his glimpse fell on the princess and he immediately fell in love with her. In the state of intoxication, he overheard the king and queen having a conversation about the princess, that she was of marriageable age. And the king said, I want to marry my daughter to someone who is an Arif Billah, a Muttaqi, a pious person, an aesthetic. Somebody close to Allah. 
So the thief, when he heard this, decided to cancel his plans for the robbery. And he made plans to get the princess. So he chose a masjid where the ministers used to frequent and started circulating himself, making ibadah day and night, engage in worship. So people started talking about his piety. In the meanwhile, the king called his advisor, his closest, and said, told him secretly he needs to seek a pious youngster for his daughter in the kingdom. So the advisor did his due diligence, got his intel, got the intelligence agencies to do research, and they conclude that, that this youngster fit the criteria of the king. So he went back to the king, informed him about the whereabouts of this youngster. The king said that that is great, that is wonderful. Send the royal proposal to this youngster. So the advisor approached the youngster. But actually this boy, while displaying show in genuine ibadah, fake ibadah, Allah gave him hidayah. And he changed his life and he started doing ibadah sincerely. So there's no more that show. So the advisor approached him, put the proposal forward, but he did not give any attention. And uh, the advisor insisted and said, you know what, this is a proposal, a royal proposal. Don't take it lightly. So eventually after insistence, the youngster said, Initially, in, in the beginning, I had bad intentions. Allah was kind to me. Now I neither need the princess, nor the castle, nor the treasures of the king, nor your armies. I found a better replacement. Please return and do not waste my time. So the advisor was shocked. This is a royal proposal. This boy must be somebody special. So he went back to the king, reported his conversation. The king was more impressed. So he said, okay, doesn't look like he's going to agree. Give him this message. So just one more last try. Obviously he wasn't aching for nothing. So he went back with the message with the, from the king and he said, what you looking, what you were looking for and you found, my daughter is more in need of that and that path. Means the figure for Hidayat, you are desirous of Hidayat to find Allah and you found Allah. My daughter is on that same road, don't get, let her get lost. You get an opportunity to guide her, guide her. So the youngster heard that, he was impressed by the king's reply. He read his istikhara, did whatever he needed to do and accepted the proposal and he told the advisor on condition that I will not move. If the princess wants to marry me, she will have to come to my life on my standard. Likewise, the king will have to follow the sunnah method of nikah, etc. And he gave him a list of terms and conditions. So they put this to the bride first, the princess. She was more than happy to comply. Likewise, the king agreed and the nikah was performed. Allah gave him the best of dunya and best of akhirah. So when a person comes onto Hidayah, then they gaze, their vision falls on the vision of what Allah and His Rasul wants. Number seven, Hidayatul Kuffar ilan nar. There will be a group of people will not even enter Jannah. They will enter into Jahannam forever and ever and ever. There will be no option, there will be no choice, there will be no opportunity to even smell the fragrance of Jannah. And this is the disbelievers, those people that have ascribed partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. أُحْشُرُ الَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا وَأَزْوَاجَهُمْ وَمَا كَانُوا يَعْبُدُونَ So the people who did wrong, it will be told, the angels will be told, assemble these people together with their companions 
فَهْدُوهُمْ إِلَىٰ صِرَاطِ الْجَحِيمِ That they should be entered into Jahannam. So their companions, their counterparts, those, those people that were like them, this is the Tafsir ibn Abbas, Sa'id ibn Jubair, Ikrama, Mujahid, etc. And likewise, uh, I heard Umar radiallahu anhu say, riwayat, Uhshirul ladheena zalamu, that those that did wrong together with their con companions means those that were like them, those that committed zina will be gathered with those who committed zina, those who dealt in riba will be gathered with those who dealt with interest. And uh, Mujahid etc. Another tafsir says وَأَزْوَاجَهُمْ means their friends, means who used to associate with in this world. They will be thrown together, the companions will be gathered, a group who disobeyed Allah and they will be thrown into Jahannam. So we have to be very cautious that we, we, we come unto Sirat Mustaqim, the straight path. And the snuffs will take a person to the road of destruction, the incorrect road. There's one road of Hidayat, the road of the devil, the road of nafs. And nafs is quite dangerous. Ahmad ibn Udraway rahimullah used to say, La no ma'athqal min al ghafla. There's no sleep more weightier than negligence. There is not more a heavier sleeper. When a person is sleeping, he is negligent of Allah, he is negligent of, of the Rasul of Allah, he is negligent of Akhirah. وَلَا رِقْ أَمْ لَكْ مِنَ الشَّهْوَى And there is no slavery, there is no limitation, there is no restraining, there is no restriction. More than shahwa. If a person is a slave, then you there is no greater slave on earth than a person who becomes a slave of his nafs and his desires. Either you control your nafs or the nafs controls you. وَلَوْلَا ثِقْلْ غَفْلَ لَمْ تَذْفَرْ بِكَ الشَّهْوَى And if you are not walking around with this burden of negligence, your desires would have not destroyed you and your desires would have not controlled you. So do not follow desires for it will take control over you. So desires are destruction. See, once a father decided to visit his son at his college, so he looked and he took direction. They said you'll find him in the chemistry class. When he got to the class he decided to observe what, what, what is my son doing? What's he busy? He's saying I'm always busy studying etc. So that was the chemistry class and they were busy with experiments. So yeah, I inquired, what are you doing? So the son said that we're busy conducting experiments to find a universal solvent. So obviously it was an old man, elderly man. He said, but what does it mean? So the class chipped in and said, you know, we're looking to develop such a liquid that will dissolve anything. So he said, sounds very good, but tell me, Sounds very good, you want to develop a liquid that will dissolve anything, but tell me, when you find it, what kind of container will you keep it in? When you find it, what kind of container will you keep it in? So this nafs is such, it will dissolve anything. Nothing can contain this nafs besides deen, besides deen, besides tawfiq from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we are all looking for solutions. Who's looking for a solution in Deen? The Mashaykh used to advise each other. Man amila li akhiratihi kafaullahu amra dunyahu. Whoever does amal for akhirah for Allah, Allah will suffice for all his needs of dunya. Allah will suffice, be adequate for all his needs of dunya. So this is what we're looking for, and this is a solution. وَمَنْ أَسْلَهَ مَا بَيْنَهُ وَبَيْنَ اللَّهِ And reconcile between you and your Allah. أَسْلَهَ اللَّهُ مَا بَيْنَهُ وَبَيْنَ النَّاسِ Allah will reconcile matters between you and the creation people. وَمَنْ أَخْلَسَ سَرِيرَتَهُ أَخْلَسَ اللَّهُ عَلَى نِيَتَهُ Whoever purifies and cleanses his internal. فَلْتَ Perfect your internal. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will perfect your outward, your external. So we need to get certain things right. Allah will solve the rest. 
Allah will solve the rest. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq for making an amal. The amal for today is to feed. It is a great and noble habit to feed people. A sahabi came to Nabi alayhi salam and asked a question, Ayyul Islam khair? Which Islam is the best? Qala tut'imu ta'am wa taqraw salam ala man arafta wa man lam ta'arif Feed as much as you can feed people. Make salam to those that you recognize and don't rec recognize. Another riwayat, A'budur Rahman Worship Allah وَأَثْعِمُ الطَّعَامِ Feed وَأَفْشُ salam Spread salam تَدْخُلُ الْجَنَّةِ بِسَلَام You will enter Jannah with salam peacefully وَآخِرُ دَعْوَانَا أَنِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ